I'm going to go from the plugin that I would install first to a new vault all the way through to 10, but I do want to say that I don't actually need any of these community plugins to use Obsidian as a notes app. These are just purely out of preference. And first up is the Zotero integration plugin. And the main reason for that is because I capture everything that's videos, blogs, academic articles, PDFs, uh, podcasts, everything goes into Zotero and then I link it into Obsidian. One of the advantages of this is if I click on duplicate items, it will show me if I've consumed a video before and if I have, I can then go to that note. Obviously, I don't have any duplicate notes because I don't want them, but you can see I have a scroll icon, uh, an emoji icon, which is automatically put on so I can right click open markdown note. And you can see in the background, it's now opened up that note. So if I click in, you can see these are the notes I've taken and there are the timestamps. I have a video about the setup, which I'll leave above my face, but you can see these are the settings. It goes to the sources folder, but I'm actually using a custom import format, which basically means I've made it. I add the site key, so it links between Zotero and Obsidian. I use my Zotero template, which again, I'll link in description. And then all the other information is just default settings. Coming in at number two is data view. And the reason I have data view there is purely because of the dashboard. You can see here, this is an obsidian canvas. That's a core plugin. And each of these is a section, a heading section inside of one file, which has loads and loads of queries. in. so if I zoom into this one, this is a data view query looking for just my blog projects, i.e. this one. So you can see 10 best outliner, blah, blah, blah. That is a blog project because it's going to go onto the website and obviously in this video. There are loads of complicated things you can do with this, but I don't really use any of them. I turn on JavaScript for another plugin, but that's it. And speaking of the other plugin, that is Metadata Menu. And the main reason I use it is because inside of the data view query, if I want to change a priority or a status, I can click on the icon. It brings up this edit box and then I can change it. So if I want the priority to be lower, I can change it to interesting. And that's just a select property that I've made. I click out and it will change it to interesting in there. And if, for example, I come in and change this to an idea, it's changed the information. And if we come back to the query, the query is being updated in the canvas. So I don't need to go in and out of pages to change any information. It's just automatically changed in here. So because I've just changed it to lower, it's going to be inside this blog query at the top. So if I come in, I change it from an idea to script. It means it's going to move it from the blog ideas to the blog projects. And there it is. To help me quickly add a new idea or project, I use the quick add plugin aptly named. And I've essentially created the same quick add four different times, essay source, blog and newsletter, which are just templates. So if I go to settings, I'm looking for the template, which is a default core plugin, just core templates. And then I'm saving it to the Danny projects folder. The reason it's Danny Projects is because this is a collaborative sync vault with someone called John who's on the PKM podcast and we have this vault together so I need to make sure it's going to my projects not his projects. By pushing on the lightning next to each one of these quick ads it adds it to a command which means I can add a hotkey to it. If I look for the SA command you can see quick add SA but with the commander community plugin instead of me having to remember all of the hotkeys because there can be a lot if you use obsidian i can just turn it into a button and i can add a button in the ribbon the tab bar status bar editor menu you can see loads of options and what i personally do is i add my projects to the tab bar so if i look to the top right in my tab bar there is a plus button i push the plus and now i get the four quick add templates options that i can just click between so i click essay it gives me the option to name it test essay enter you can see it's added a test essay file inside of the data view query. So when I click into it, it's used my essay template. So that's using all of these property information plus some other things. So different things for an essay. And Commander is also useful when using the Workspace Plus plugin, which basically adds a command to the core workspace options. So going into the settings, I don't change anything, but each workspace that I make with the core workspace plugin comes up here. And exactly the same with quick add you can see workspace is plus plugin load home workspace so it's now a command which i then add to the ribbon so i have a home workspace a temporary workspace which i save as i'm going through work so it's sort of like a, a checkpoint of where i'm at and then i have other quick add commands in there as well to speed up different places such as john's home so i know what he's doing uh, and then so Terra integration plugin that's a command that goes in there outline and then the book writing workspace as well as I do a lot of writing, I use the Quick Switcher++ for essentially one feature, and that is being able to search for headings as well as all of the other files and things that you would normally get in the core switcher. So I can go into my Quick Switcher just like normal, and you can see we've got some icons next to the side, which will tell me what they are. So that's a recent search, that's a file. And if I push a hash key, 
and then type in the name of a heading or a name of something that I think I've got some writing on. So for example, the Feynman technique, I know there is the Feynman technique heading inside of the learning research file and it's a heading too. And then I can click it and it will take me to that section. And for very similar reasons, I use the quiet outline to also help me search through headings, but this is searching through a specific file. So I'm now in my learning research file and inside this file there are lots of different points and you can see I can scroll down here and there are loads of ideas and as I scroll down it will then expand the different headings that I'm in unlike the normal outline you can see on the side here it's expanding the one that I'm actually in and I can also so let's just reset that and go to the top search for something so if I'm looking for teaching for example TEA it's looking for teaching and I now I can jump straight down to the teaching part of this learning research file and then if I want to extract it I can and work with whatever text I want to go with now the ninth and tenth plugins I have to kind of put together because the supercharge links is needed and then the style links is needed to make it actually look any good so the supercharge links essentially allows me to add something a look to a file and when I come into the plugin, I'm looking for status and priority. They are the, the properties, they are the fields of the files that I'm using. So the fields of the project. So priority of the project and status of the project. And then I'm looking for priority high, priority interesting, priority medium. So the different stages of priority. And then I'm looking for the status is done. And I can look for a tag, I can look for a note path, I can look for anything that I want, but this is my personal preference. But to customize the look of them, I need to go into the style settings plugin find the supercharge links CSS theme. So if we go to the appearance and scroll all the way down, you can see it's a snippet, not a theme, my bad, wrong wording, but you can see it's down here. I've added that. And because I've turned it on, it's being found in the style settings. So when I click in here, I can add a color. I can change the font weight I can change the decorations, add an emoji before, after anything like that. So you can see I now have the different shades of green all the way through to red which is why all of these are different colors. So I can immediately see from a high level view what is high priority. So all the greens are high priority and the reds are low priority at the moment. White being things that I need to manage or do something with because they're just the default color. So I know uh, these are new ideas that I've brought in for the newsletter that I need to add a priority to. That's my top 10, but everyone's a little bit different. So let me know your top 10 in the comment section below.